Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us for day one, the official first day of our daily creative challenge. We are trying to get you pumped for the summer with your illustrator muscles. You wouldn't know that because we are in a fast food or food court right now, but we gotta get fueled up before we get our muscles strong. And today's theme is, happens to be, fast food. So we'll get more into that in a bit. First, wanna say hello to everyone in chat. Hello, hello, my name's Kathleen. I'm an illustrator and designer here at Adobe, and you might have also seen my face on Adobe Live over on Behance. So enough about me. Let's chat a little bit about our daily creative challenges. Uh, really, the goal is to get you feeling much more confident with Illustrator in just seven days. We're challenging you to create seven simple, awesome illustrations over the course of the next 10 days. You have until April 20th to complete this challenge. And seriously, designing is all about practice. Uh, you need a coach, you need encouragement, and that is what we are here to provide for you. There's a couple different ways that you can get involved with this challenge, but the best way is to just sign up. There is a link in the YouTube description box below uh, to take you to this landing page. And here you're gonna find the let's get started information. All it takes is your name and your email and you will receive your first challenge tomorrow morning, bright and early. And then you'll also be able to take a part in these uh, live streams every evening at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So once you have your challenge, you'll work on the theme of the day, come over to the live stream in the evening to show off your work or maybe work through how to maybe create something for that day's challenge. And then we're going to upload it onto Behance, which is our favorite way to share our work. We have some awesome projects already on Behance for today's theme, but we'll talk about that soon. Uh, another way that you can get involved, which is one of my favorite and most exciting ways, is we have a Slack channel for you all. If you don't know what Slack is, it's basically like a giant chat room where you can hang out with your fellow creatives, share your work. There's even a Get Feedback uh, channel that we have opened up where you can post the work that you're working on and then we'll give you feedback. We have an awesome success story from today about that. But this is totally free and it's a great way to interact throughout the week when we are not live. Ooh, we have some awesome friends in chat. We've got Alfonso, Tanya, Sylvain, VCG Construction. What's going on, Janie, Rebecca? Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it for day one. So heading back to our landing page. Like I said, we are encouraging you to export these and upload them on Behance. And when you do that, you're gonna be a part of this beautiful gallery. These are just the submissions from today, in the last 24 hours. I think everyone here at Adobe has their mind just blown by the awesome skill and creativity of you all so far. You can see a bunch of rockets because we did an intro stream yesterday and we worked on rockets. This one by Viran is super cool. And then you can also see a bunch of fast food because that's what today's theme was. Uh, we'll be highlighting a few of our favorites from today's submissions at the end of the stream. But first I want to jump into Illustrator and maybe we can just walk through quickly how to create something fast food related in Illustrator using really, really simple tools. Does that sound good? What's up, Luis? Welcome. Oh no, Tanya says I'm terrible at Illustrator. Hope to be more comfortable after this. That's the goal, Tanya. Your muscles are gonna get strong. You're gonna know all about vectors. It's gonna be great. What's up, Tackle Boys? I'm excited to see your submission soon too. So you can see here I have Illustrator open. If you haven't downloaded Illustrator, now would be a great time to start and then you can watch the stream and maybe try a project later. But uh, when you open Illustrator, you're gonna see something like this, a new document window. You can choose any of our preset sizes. You can also make your own dimensions up if you would like to. Uh, I'm just gonna go with what we used yesterday, the minimum size, and you would just click create. You have your new document. Easy as that. VCG Construction, Adobe Creative is an awesome set of tools. So glad to have you here. Thank you so much. So this is the file that I was working on yesterday. As you can see, we have a fun little rocket that we created and I even customized him a bit uh, yesterday after the stream just to make him a little more friendly, a little more fun. Uh, we are really encouraging you all to maybe think a little bit outside the box. So I have a rocket, but he has a face why not that sounded cool to me and that's really the power of illustrator 
I've also been playing with a couple different fast food themes. So I have some pizza, some drippy pizza. I have some pizza with some drippy crust, which I don't know, crust could be drippy, who's to say? And I have a happy little fry friend here. But ultimately I thought I would go ahead and maybe recreate the hot dog. That was the theme inspiration uh, that you got in your email. And uh, if you haven't received that email and you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and check out that link in the description box. That is where you're gonna sign up and get your first submission and your first theme tomorrow. Yes, thank you, Michael. It is a cute rocket. Maybe we can name him, chat, if you have any good ideas for our little friend here. I like Harold. Something classic and clean, who knows? But let's jump into working on this hot dog. Super simple, these uh, squiggly lines are really fun to make in Illustrator and they can be a little intimidating, but I'm gonna show you a really easy trick to create squiggles. All right, let's start with the bun. Sounds good to me. So right now I have my selection tool selected. That's kind of your uh, go-to tool when you're using Illustrator. It helps you select things and deselect things, but we're gonna go to our rounded rectangle tool. You can see over here that it is kind of below the type tool and the line segment tool. And when you see this, you might just see the rectangle tool as the option. All you have to do is click and long hold and you will see all these other options in this fly out menu. So let's go ahead and pick the rounded rectangle. Cool, cool. Ooh, VCG says Ricky the Rocket. Ollie, Ollie, that, that's really good. Francis Lafousse, that's a good French name for a French rocket. All right, we have the rounded rectangle tool selected and you'll see when I just click and start dragging, I'm making a rectangle with rounded corners. That's really uh, handy. So we're going to drag out something similar to this. And actually before we start, let me clean up my workspace a little bit. We did this yesterday and it's gotten dirty since then. I've been so disorganized. So if you want to uh, stay with me and have the same workspace that I do, let's go up to the top menu where we see our workspace chosen. And let's do reset essentials. And that's gonna get all those menus out of our way. Perfect, what's up Felicia? You're a bit late, but you are here. You are here just in time, believe me. All right, we have our rounded rectangle and we really want this rectangle to be a little more rounded. And we worked on this yesterday with these uh, smart corner widgets right here. So when I have the shape selected, this is technically a live shape, so we can uh, change the attributes. We see these live corners. And yesterday we just selected one corner, but today we're gonna keep it simple and select all of them by just grabbing one, clicking and dragging in. We don't want it to be a perfect kind of oval, that maybe it would look more like a hamburger bun. We want it to be a little, have a little bit of an edge still. Looks good. Everyone with me? If you're working alongside me. All right, we have our ham, or our hot dog bun. Now let's make the hot dog. We're gonna use the exact same tool. The rounded rectangle tool is still selected. Let me turn key caster on so you guys can see my hot keys, all the hot, hot keys. And we're gonna make the hot dog. So I'm gonna drag a little bit outside of the hot dog bun. And you can see these smart guides that we talked about yesterday, the, the magenta lines that are kind of appearing and disappearing. Those are helping me to know when things are perfectly centered, when they are equidistant apart. And they're really helpful to have turned on. If you don't have them turned on, just go up to view and make sure there's a check mark next to smart guides. You can also do the hotkey of command U. All right, so I just turned mine off. Now let's turn them back on. <laughs> or maybe I turned them off. Let's turn them back on now. Perfect. Pakistan Media Today, welcome. Thank you for being here. These streams are pretty short. They're only about 25 minutes, so if you uh, miss some of it, feel free to go watch the replay right after the stream is done. It'll be available as soon as we're done here. All right, we have our hot dog. I'm gonna use my smart guides to make sure it is perfectly centered in our bun. Here we go. 
Let's grab these corners and let's smooth them as much as we possibly can. I'm pulling as far as I can and this little red line is telling me that you can't pull it any further. This is as far as it goes. Awesome. Now I want to make it very obvious that the bun and the hot dog are separate. So let's go to our Pathfinder. Uh, we used this a little bit yesterday and I don't see it available in my properties panel. So let's open up the window. Let's go up to window and we're gonna choose Pathfinder. Awesome. I'm gonna just drag it over here. And with both of my shapes selected, and it's really important that uh, both of these shapes are filled in with color, they're not stroke, they are totally filled and you can do that. For example, if they are stroked, you select them both. Click on your fill, which is this over here, and you're gonna select your color. I'm also gonna click on my stroke and click no stroke because I don't need one. What's up Flavio from Brazil, welcome. All right, let's select both of our shapes and we're going to use our Pathfinder. We're gonna use our trim option. It's hidden, right? This one, here. <laughs> this is trim. When we click it, it's going to knock this hot dog out of this hot dog bun. Bada bing, bada boom. Gonna move this up a couple pixels by just pressing the up arrow. Move this one down a couple pixels. We have a nice hot dog. Now we could have just done this by adding a white stroke around the hot dog, but this is just another way to do it. All right, now for the piece de resistance, the sauce on top of the hot dog. Let's use our squiggle zigzag effect. If I wanted to hand draw this, it might be a little bit difficult. I'm sure I could with the blob brush tool, but we are going to use an awesome effect that we have here in Illustrator. The first thing we're gonna do is just draw a line segment. So I'm gonna use the line segment tool here. So it just allows me to draw straight lines pretty easy. And I'm going to click, and I'm going to draw out a straight line using my smart guides to keep it nice and straight. Awesome, I have it. I'm gonna add a stroke to it by double clicking on my stroke option, maybe choosing a nice yellow because it might be a little bit of mustard. And it's not very squiggly. So how are we gonna do this? With our stroke line selected, let's go up to effect here at the top part of our toolbar. And let's go to, I believe it is, distort and transform. You'll see zigzag here at the bottom. Select it and it's gonna pull up a menu. Of course, nothing changes because we don't have our preview selected. Let's click preview. And this is very geometric mustard, so let's go to smooth, make it a little more curvy. And let's make the size a little smaller, or a little larger, I should say. And a couple more ridges per segment. You can play with this, it can get really artisan, really artisanal, really quick. Let's keep it down here, keep it some normal mustard. Okay, looks good, but it's very thin. So let's go over here to our properties panel, panel and find our stroke. I'm gonna bump it up to, that looks good. Looks like a good amount of mustard. Now the only thing I have left to do here is to round off the edges. The way I'm going to do that is I'm gonna open up my stroke options by just clicking on the word stroke here. And I'm gonna choose my cap right here to be a round cap. You'll see when I do that, boom, becomes perfectly rounded mustard, awesome. The only thing we have left to do is to add a little mustard drip because nobody's perfect, sometimes we're messy. Let's do that by just adding another rounded rectangle. We've only used rounded rectangles today, super easy. I'm gonna select my tool again by going over to my toolbar over here, making sure my tool is selected, a rounded rectangle. And I'm just gonna draw a little drip. Now it has a thick stroke because we made the mustard have a stroke. Once again, I'm gonna go over here and make sure that my stroke is none, but my fill color is yellow. Easy peasy. We're pretty much done. I'm just gonna throw some color into here. I'm gonna steal the color from here by pressing I to open the eyedropper tool. There we go. And we'll go into color at a later date. We'll also go into selecting multiple items at a later date. It's pretty easy. You just hold shift to hold multiple things. But there we go, we have our hot dog.
It looks delicious. I hope it's a veggie dog though. <laughs> Rebecca says, I'm such a newbie, gonna have to watch the replay. That was really quick, Rebecca. I do not blame you for wanting to watch the replay. Uh, but we do just have a little bit of time left. So I would love to get this exported and uploaded onto Behance so we can share it with all of you. I think this is the most important part of this whole daily uh, creative challenge because we need to be able to see your challenge entries and we need to be able to appreciate you and uh, give you feedback and as well as everyone else can. Yeah, no problem, Sam. So the way that I'm going to export this, oh, what's up, Alexander Pierpoint, my good friend, also a new Illustrator user. Thanks for being here. So the way I'm gonna export this, it's really, really easy. I'm going to make sure I have my selection tool selected. You can tap V, that's the hotkey for it. I'm gonna click and drag around my entire hot dog. When I release, you'll see that all the shapes are selected. And I'm just gonna right click on it and go do export selection. Now, yesterday we went up to file and then export selection, but I'm just showing you that there's an even easier way that you can do right on your workspace. Right click on your asset, export selection. Awesome. When I do that, you'll see this menu appear. I'm going to choose where I would like my asset to be saved by clicking on this folder icon. Let's put it on my desktop. Put it in my daily creative challenge folder. Awesome. Now let's do it at maybe, let's do it at a 100% scale. So one X and we're just gonna do a JPEG 100. There's a bunch of different options. You can do SVGs or PDFs, but not needed for today. Let's just do JPEG. You could also choose PNG. That plays nicely with Behance as well. And all you have to do is click export asset and you'll see in my finder window, there's my hot dog. She's looking pretty. Love it. What's up, Chris? Thanks for being here. All right. Now we've created our asset. We have exported our asset, which basically just means taken our illustration from Illustrator and plopped it on our computer somewhere. Now, what are we gonna do with it? We're gonna upload it to Behance. So if you do not have a Behance account yet, it's super easy. If you have a CC subscription, you can just use your Adobe ID to sign in, uh, or you can make one really quickly. I will sign out quick and show you how to sign in. You can either sign up with your email, with Facebook or your uh, Gmail account, but I already have one. So let's go ahead and sign in there. <coughs> yeah, Z, never thought it would be this easy. So here I am logged in. <coughs> Sorry, a lot of talking today. And this is actually really important. I'm going to update the project that I've been working on. So let's go to my portfolio. Z, you never thought it would be this easy. It is, you saw it, <coughs> excuse me. So here is my uh, daily creative challenge project that I've already been working on. Let's just go in and edit that. We don't need to make new things or new projects for every single day. What's your Behance? My Behance is Kathleen Adobe. And everyone in chat, if you have your Behance, uh, you can just click on each other's faces to go find them. So go and do that now while I take a drink of water. Oh, Akash, you're here. You were here during Adobe Live. Awesome, thanks for coming. <laughs> All right, so you can see that I have my rocket ship from day one. Let's just add something below there. All I'm gonna do, insert media, upload files. <clears throat> gonna go over to my daily creative challenge, find my hot dog, uploader. There she is. And below I'm going to type Day, let's turn off Keycaster. Day number one, because today is officially the first day. The theme is fast food. I'm gonna write, hopefully, it's a veggie dog. Because <coughs> I think those are the best kind. All right, that's all you have to do. You can always come back and edit your projects later, but let's just go ahead and save it. 
Now, one of the most important things, and if this is your first day, please remember that in your settings, you have to put in creative fields, which we just did graphic design, icon design, and illustration. <clears throat> But over in discoverability, this is really the key to these daily creative challenges. You have to put the keyword daily creative challenge, one word, for us to be able to find it. <coughs> so daily creative challenge is the keyword. That's the way that we can track it. And that's the way that you all can check out each other's work as well. I'm going to save. And we're done. If we go to my portfolio, we click on this project. Oh, thanks, Sassy Dhar. It's an awesome name. Um, we have our rocket ship from day zero from Blast Off. And now we have day one's fast food. So hopefully that wasn't too fast. If it was, go ahead and watch the replay as soon as we're done. I'm going to take these last couple minutes and I wanted to show some of the awesome work that you have all created uh, over the last 24 hours. It's really incredible. If you search the keyword daily creative challenge, that is how you'll find all of the work. And this one by Heidi was really, really interesting and cool to us on the team because you not only had a really, really inspirational idea, fast fuel for, for biking, it's, it's really healthy, it's super fast food, but it's not your, your normal fast food. Uh, the really interesting part about this is that Heidi shared the story of her idea. She really made this project full by telling the story, sharing her idea, and making it um, really palatable for the viewer, no pun intended. So as you can see, I have already appreciated this because I appreciate it. And I'm also going to comment, creative idea. Boom, you can see that Michael already commented, wow, so good, he beat me by about eight hours. Awesome job, Heidi. All right, I'm gonna pop over to the next one. What's up, Thomas? Thank you so much for being here. This one is by Glenn, and Thomas and Glenn are actually both a part in Heidi as well. They're all a part of our Slack channel. They've joined. There is the link, uh, bit.ly slash daily challenge Slack, if you'd like to join. But Glenn posted his work in our Git feedback channel, which is, like I said earlier, a way for you to share your preliminary ideas and maybe get some feedback before you post. So Glenn posted this, said, First time doing this kind of thing, how could I improve this? Anything more interesting I can do with the corn dogs? LOL. <laughs> uh, Michael Shez responded, first of all, that he had to Google corn dogs because we don't have those in France. But he also gave some awesome critique and art direction and also provided a reference image. And also told Glenn maybe that he could try out the zigzag technique that I just showed you. Glenn took all of this uh, into consideration in his upload, and you can see it sparked a lot of really awesome conversation. This was uh, Glenn's kind of finished idea that he posted to us. And a lot of other people got into the mix as well. So this is awesome. This was his first idea. He showed his progress. This is his final idea. I personally really love the, the bubblegum pink in the background. That fit, pairs well for some reason with this kind of fair food. So I'm gonna appreciate this. Really nice, Glenn. On to the next. Uh, this is Mahmoud's, and we really love this one because it's clear that they use the zigzag effect, or at least it looks like they did. So we love that effect here. And I was also gonna ask you, Mahmoud, if these were french fries, because they almost look like corn dog sticks. So that's something I'm gonna ask in the comments. Love the zigzag effect for the bottom image. Are they fries? Either way, looks delish. So this is just examples of how you can all interact with each other on your Behance uh, projects, but as well as our Slack channel. All right, let's head on to Chris's. Chris's is really cool, and he's also, or they're also a part of our Slack channel. We just thought this was super cute and a really nice use of simple shapes uh, and making a really kind of convincing graphic out of just really simple things. So I'm gonna appreciate that, give him a thumbs up. He's got seven so far, seven views, very nice. And finally, this is by Joseph. I love this because it was very arresting, like something is obviously happening in this image. And Michael Shez pointed out earlier that this looks like a really strong logo 
for a company, and that Joseph also did a really good job with the shadow back here as well. But we did have a question. We were wondering, why is there an exclamation point? What is happening? So I'm going to say, so much intrigue. What's the story with the exclamation point? Put quotes around that so it's under clear what I'm saying. Post a comment. It's that easy and I really hope that you all take uh, this and kind of fly with it. Update your projects by the end of the day. Go ahead and appreciate other people's work and join us over on Slack. We'd love to have you. If you haven't joined the seven day challenge yet, you have until April 20th or 21st to finish all your work. So go ahead and go to the page in our description box down below, get involved. And we will be back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. if you would like to kind of work through the theme for tomorrow. I'm not gonna let you know what it is, but you'll find out very early tomorrow morning. Awesome everyone, thanks for being here. Hope you're having a great evening and I'm gonna go grab some food from the food court. So. I'll see you later. Bye.